What's your favorite story from a time everyone went out after a game to celebrate a victory or let off some steam? On an earlier pod, it was oh, referenced boy. that Heath Pierce used to be a menace back in the day. But I'll start with Charlie first. What's your favorite story from from after after party? Heath will love this one. Um, so we're in Chicago and we're playing Honduras. And so this was just prior to going to uh, South Africa for the Confederations Cup. So okay. I get I get called in and, you know, I'm excited. My agent at the time, uh, Lyle Yorks. And we just um, took a beating, by the way, from Costa Rica. Uh, things are tense. Yeah, thing, things were <laughs> tense. Uh, we was three one. We got so, I think it's three nil. Yeah, oh, yeah. might have been three yeah. nil. So, you know, that was quite the experience. So we, we we fly to Chicago, and my agent Lyle Yorks calls me and says, "Hey, Charlie, um, Bochum from the Bundesliga is coming to watch you play. Uh, wow. th they're really interested." I said, "Oh my god, okay, gotta gotta be ready. I'm gonna I know I'm gonna come off the bench. Hopefully, you know I impress. I don't play. I'm like, oh my god." And I, and I met the scout earlier um, and, and one of the, the people from the front office. So I just said, oh, I'm sorry I didn't get to play. And that's like, nope, no worries. We'll have plenty of time, so uh, chances to watch you play. So then after the game, we win. Everyone's excited. We head out to uh, Underground in Chicago, the whole team. And I was, I was just like, oh, my God, this is, this is what it's about, the whole team coming together. So we're all hanging out. And you know, B, this is Bees' town. This is Bees' city. This is where he, <laughs> he started playing. So he had the hookup. Every, we're all set. I turn around, and I see like, kind of like a big circle, and it's Frankie Hayduk, and he's got his <laughs> he's got his glasses on, and he's like, "Yeah, dude." <laughs> um, and and everyone was just together. I turn around, I see Landon dancing, and I I just thought, "Wow, this is a team," and uh, I'm just. I was just super proud at that moment to to be together with everybody. All right. That's was that it a nice, sweet, sweet ending. Go ahead. It might have been a different night, but I'm pretty sure Luol Deng and his brother were there that night. I, I uh, remember something specific. Uh, also, there was I'll like a, throw a little in, bit of a fight or something that almost went down. I didn't see night. a fight, but I did also yeah. see Drake was coming in to, to, nice, to nice. the building. And, uh, oh, J.R. Smith because he, he was playing at the Bulls at the time. So I was like, oh, my God, this place is crazy. <laughs> and I, another story I'll throw in is one of my first national team camps. We all went to dinner. Uh, it might have been Fogo de Chao, 16 players at the table, maybe 16, 18. And the bill comes. And we like credit card roulette? Yeah, credit card roulette. Oh, I think, my I think God. The bill, I think the bill was 1600 And I was one of the four left. So I, I made the semis. And Marvell win. <laughs> gets picked <laughs> and marvell was like <laughs> oh, i i uh just to piggyback that and i'll let you go heath my first ever like we went to gold cup and we're in seattle for the first game it's before my first cap and there's eight of us that went out to like a really really nice steakhouse and we played credit card roulette and at that point pam perkins who was the team administrator team mom she was like the real mvp of of u.s soccer the men's national team behind the scenes oh yeah she she gives out like like this envelope it's like drug money it's like thick you get like this 800 dollars, you know for your per diem for the first two weeks or something i'm like god damn i'm on this is amazing i want to come to the national team more and i go and i lose credit card roulette and i basically have to hand over my 800 dollars to pay for mm. the food absolutely brutal but uh yeah credit card roulette can get a little dangerous all right he take it away yeah i can't remember if it was a credit card roulette if it was confederations cup or the nelson mandela challenge we did in south africa that gooch was one of the last two and it was table it was the team staff security i mean it was like a wedding table right like it went it went all the way down <laughs> the street and it was i remember gooch was one of the last two and then he didn't lose and i remember him making this massive scene where he was just running around the table, screaming, yelling, like running out of the restaurant. I can't remember what it was, but I remember it being. I, I think um, that was DC, to be honest. Was it DC? I think so. No, I mean there was one that we were definitely out of the country. I can't remember which which one it was. It may have been may have been DC. Well, I, I wasn't in I wasn't in DC, so uh, it went. It had to have been a different one for me. Um, but was it South Africa. I remember South Africa being one. Yeah, I remember. So, so you were one of the final four then. Yeah, and so was... Mar lost that one. <laughs> yeah. Oh, poor Marvel, dude. I remember he got in trouble for for uh, 
for uh, tweeting something about having a front row seat to the Confederations Cup <laughs> and Bob, <laughs> Bob being mad about that. But my story, my, this story is, is less so a night out is like, you know, for context, we used to come in uh, during qualifiers. And a lot of times you're based out of Miami on, I think it was like the north side or south side of Miami. I can't remember what hotel we were it at. Was, but it, it was Coconut the, Grove. Is that Coconut what it was? Grove, Coconut Mayfair. Grove. Yeah. Coconut Grove. Mayfair. So Coconut Grove. So when you're in a double fixture day, you get with Bob, you would get Tuesday. Tuesday you would have before your 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 Friday game or maybe it was Monday um you would have lunch breakfast training lunch with the team and then you'd have a midnight curfew so you know guys would go out and do their thing throughout the day I'll leave a lot of the details out but they would go <laughs> yeah. and enjoy themselves from from lunchtime to to midnight so I remember there's like everybody out doing their thing everybody's connecting with each other texting where's everybody at you know we're we're at a couple swimming pools the beach whatever and then midnight's coming quick and I'm with a few of the guys and we're like, we got to go. So we jump into a taxi and we are bolting back to, because like Bob waited in the lobby for, for curfew and Bob would have Mike Sorber sometimes like they were, you know, reading the newspaper in the lobby, just being like, Oh Peter yeah. Novak. Yeah. Peter Novak <laughs> doing room checks. No uh, trust. By yeah. The way. That always yeah. bummed me out. So yeah, it, it was, it was kind of a bummer, but like, you know, we were also kind of, uh, you know, whatever. So <laughs> We get we sprinting back. We're like, dude, we got like three minutes. We get back. If you've ever watched like an organized, if you've ever watched like those, this is bad context, but like a, those terrorist movies where like the three or four cars pull up at the same time to do something, some damage, the doors all open at the same time. That's what it's like. But I'm only with two people. We pull up in the cab, throw the doors open. We're like sprinting to get back into this hotel. When I, when we get out of the cab, we look left and right. And there's like three other groups sprinting full speed from whatever they were doing to get into this hotel. So we're rushing into the hotel, open the door, we get inside, and there's Bob, and it's 11.59. And there's Bob and his guys just sitting right in the lobby of this Coconut Grove Hotel. So we all pile into this elevator, and it's just silent. Everybody's like, good night, good night, good night, good night, good night. You know? <laughs> and, and it's like at least 10 people now, you know, maybe even more. We all pile into this elevator. And if you knew the camaraderie of obviously this group back in those days, it was like always in a, a kind of like – together at all costs oh, it was as soon as that door closes the whole elevator erupts screaming <laughs> basically taunting bob and mike sorber who are in the lobby <clears throat> we're all cheering jumping up and down singing songs knowing that everybody had come from uh, uh, whatever they were up to whatever they were doing on their time off to beat curfew by a minute to, to get inside the elevator and then celebrate knowing that we had beat the system <laughs> it was one of my favorite moments of the group knowing that like you know on the other side of that elevator wall was bob and 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 his staff sitting in the lobby uh you know trying to catch us out after midnight and everybody just cheers like cheered as if we had just won a game it was a, it was a, it was a big win for the boys that night okay that's a good one i like that i'm going to i'm going to give a bitter bitter bob story where there was a lot going on, of course, and, and it was after we had qualified for the 2010 World Cup. We had gone down to Honduras and got that result against Honduras there. Oh, San what an epic, epic moment. Epic. Unbelievable. It was, you know, you get back on a plane right after, so you don't get a proper celebration, but we were going to go back to D.C. and play Costa Rica. Now, in the midst of that week, Charlie was a little bit hurt, and that's when he had the crazy ass and super sad car accident. So that was always, you know, we were concerned about him, but prior to that happening, Oguchi Yewu had set up this big, big, like, we're going to go out, boys. You know, after the Costa Rica game, we're going to go out. We're going to do our thing. Now, in that Costa Rica game, Aguch hurts his knee pretty significantly, but does it, we don't really know the extent of it at that point. But a couple days, honestly, I'm going to rewind it back. He's like, hey, everybody, let's, everybody puts in 250 bucks, and I'm going to get, like, the, like, bottle service, all this stuff. And so as the night approached, you know, we were obviously still kind of in shock about Charlie and, and still in shock about Gucci's knee as that happens. Everybody's still like, we're going to go, go. We got to go party to all the reasons that you're saying this camaraderie within the group and, and let's go celebrate. Charlie would want us to do this and, and really took that energy and went out there. So everybody put in a shit ton of money, right? We, we finally get in the bus. We show up at the club at 1245 AM and we sit there, we get bottle service, and they kick us out 15 minutes later because it's closing time at 1 a.m. I'm like, God damn you, Gooch. Oh, give, me no. my, my, give me my money back, dude. Oh, no. I mean, it was all good, and it, was, it, it makes for an amazing story. 
But uh, I think it's always super funny that I've actually one never reapproached that with Gooch because I'm always scared of what he's gonna say to me in return. Like, dude, shut up, you know? Or or uh, and and I just kind of had to eat it. But I always thinking like, dude, what happened there? Why wouldn't they? Let's let's leave Gooch out of it now. Why wouldn't the club just keep like it's the U.S. Men's National Team that's qualified for World Cup? Let us keep it open for another hour. You know, it's not. Yeah, I, I think Gooch, about that I think well. Gooch pocketed the pocketed that cash. I'm not gonna lie. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. He, 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 he got a new watch. I think he got a new watch like, <laughs> yeah. that next week. Uh, we got to get him on the show. I want him to answer <laughs> uh, answer this question.